Hello, you're watching Sideline on MNB World. Our guest today is Ms. Annika Peterson, country representative of Global Green Growth Institute in Mongolia. So, Ms. Annika Peterson, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. So, the Global Green Growth Institute is an international and intergovernmental organization which is dedicated to supporting the strong, inclusive, uh, sustainable economic growth in developing countries including Mongolia. So could you tell uh, us how Mongolia became a Triple GI member country and what Triple GI Mongolia works to achieve? Yeah, thank you. Um, in 2012, uh, the Global Green Growth Institute was started as an international organization at the Rio Plus 20 Summit on Sustainable Development. And this was kind of coming on the heels of the 2009 Climate Change sub Summit in Copenhagen, which didn't go as well as many countries had anticipated. And so um, Korea and uh, Denmark and a small group of countries worked together to launch the Global Green Growth Institute as an international organization in 2012. And shortly after that, Mongolia became a member in 2014. And GGGI and Mongolia have been working together as partners since that time to promote climate action and green economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, within the framework of the Paris Agreement, um, Mongolia developed a target for its reduction in greenhouse gas emission or its nationally determined contribution, which is a 14% reduction by 2030. By, but this uh, target was then updated to 22.7% and then it was raised to 27.2%. So why has Mongolia's initial target for reducing greenhouse gas emission has updated and nearly doubled in the past few years? And what should be done uh, in Mongolia to achieve this country's updated NDC? Yeah, uh, it's really great that Mongolia has been increasing its ambition and taking up stronger and stronger climate action over the years. In 2015, uh, when the initial climate change commitment was announced, um, it only focused on a few priority sectors, primarily energy. Uh, but in 2019, GGGI and other organizations worked with Mongolia to update its climate change commitment or its NDC. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, some additional sectors and additional activities were incorporated into the NDC. So for example, in the energy sector, the emissions almost doubled. The pledged emissions reductions were doubled by adding some additional energy efficiency and uh, targets into the plan. And most importantly, Mongolia incorporated agriculture into its NDC. Mm -hmm. Nearly half of Mo Mongolia's emissions come yeah, from, from the agriculture sector. Yeah. And so by adding agriculture uh, to the NDC, it really boosted Mongolia's greenhouse gas emission commitment. And in addition to that, some smaller uh, sectors were also included, like waste. Um, those just take up a small share of the emissions in the country, so they didn't have as big of an impact as agriculture and energy, but it's important nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2019, as you said, that Mongolia added another uh, focus on the, uh, on the reduction of greenhouse gas emission, which is agriculture. As another major part of GGGI's work is to catalyze green finance, green investment for, the, uh, for its member countries. So in 2020, uh, the GGGI Mongolia mobilized 49.6 million US dollars in green investment for climate change related projects. So could you tell us about what kind of projects were there and which organizations you work with in order to uh, provide this project financing? Yeah, due to GI, we don't have our own money, um, so we work with our partners to help find the right source of financing. And at the end of uh, last year, we got some really great news uh, from the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund was set up to provide uh, financial support to developing countries like Mongolia to implement their NDCs. And at the end of last year, uh, the Green Climate Fund confirmed their commitment of almost $27 million to the Mongolian Green Finance Corporation. Um, so 
together in total this uh, with the commitment from the banking sector in Mongolia as well as the Mongolian government it almost reaches 50 million dollars um, the Mongolian Green Finance Corporation was and this commitment from the GCF was a culmination of many years of work by lots of organizations um, GGGI the Ministry of Environment and Tourism the Mongolian Sustainable Finance Association Haas Bank and others uh, work together to develop Develop this proposal and um, what it does is provide a financing facility to uh, provide financial support for investments in green housing industrial energy efficiency and activities like that and then the hope is that if the financing facility is working well that they'll be able to expand into additional areas into the future uh, what, what kind of additional areas are you planning to enter into the future yeah, well, I think, as, I, as we said earlier, um, emissions in agriculture are quite high, and there's been some smaller pilot projects on trying to reduce emissions from agriculture. So I assume that if things are going well, uh, the fund would try to expand into the agriculture sector as well. Uh, but energy will, is also still a key needed. issue, yeah. and it'll still be a priority for the fund mm -hmm. as well. The last two projects that were provided with uh, project financing was the greenhousing projects mainly. Green housing and industrial energy efficiency. And we're also working on another uh, housing related project as well to mobilize $30 million um, from the NAMA facility as well as co-financing from uh, the government of Mongolia. So this seeks to mobilize an $18 million grant financing from the NAMA facility to support improving the insulation in apartment buildings here in UB. Perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I think that's also important for improving the comfort uh, of of buildings and of the residents in those buildings and also saving energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's called a ret uh, retrofitting, right? Yes, so, residential retrofitting. Uh, how yeah. many uh, apartment buildings, apartment blocks uh, did you insulate within your project? Well, we're just at the starting phase uh, now, uh, but in, in uh, Ulaanbaatar, there's more than a thousand of these apartment building blocks. And so uh, we're aiming to set up a revolving fund that will help uh, provide sustainable source of financing to retrofit these buildings, hopefully all 1,000 of them. Um, but in the first few years, we're aiming to retrofit 375 of the apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on Mongolia's opportunities and challenges in reaching its green growth goals? Yeah, I think um, it's important to think both about the challenges and also the opportunities. Obviously, one of the biggest challenges is that 90% of the energy and heat comes from uh, coal. And so uh, working to transition away from coal and improve energy efficiency is really an important part of moving towards uh, a green development pathway. Um, but there's also other challenges. Um, UB has grown quite quickly in recent years, and one of our priorities globally is working on green cities. And so there's lots of uh, challenges associated with that rapid growth, uh, providing housing, transportation, uh, waste management and sanitation. All of these are really key issues for sustainable development in the city of Ulaanbaatar, uh, but also in smaller cities throughout Mongolia as well. I think they face similar challenges. They may not get as much attention, um, but I think many of the cities throughout Mongolia are facing similar challenges. And then uh, thirdly, obviously agriculture uh, is plays a huge part uh, in the Mongolian economy. It's important for people's lives and livelihoods. And so improving, working with farmers to or and herders to improve uh, their production is really important, uh, but also minimizing the environmental footprint at the same time. And I think there's lots of exciting ideas out there and ways in which you can do both. Um, improve the livelihoods and economic well-being of herding families, but also protect the environment. And so these are kind of win-win solutions are the ideas that we like to promote. Mm -hmm. So uh, about the activities of your organization, GGGI, uh, in Mongolia. So aside from green investment, uh, what other activities does GGGI in Mongolia do and what other areas uh, do you focus on? Yeah, I think historically, uh, the energy sector has been a priority for us here in Mongolia. We've done a lot of work on promoting renewable energy, 
promoting energy efficiency in the residential sector and in the industrial sector, and just promoting the use of green technologies um, to conserve energy. So this has been a priority of ours and it will continue to be a priority of ours. The second area uh, where we work is obviously on climate action, so building capacity around climate change and also mobilizing investments uh, to support implementation of Mongolia's climate change objectives. And so um, this year we've been working together with some, uh, a group of organizations called the NDC Partnership. Mm -hmm. What we've been doing this year is uh, doing some trainings for different stakeholders in Mongolia, both at national and sub-national level, to uh, learn this how to um, assess greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and this is important so that they can, in their own work, in their own sectors, they can understand uh, how they're contributing to greenhouse gas emissions and then what actions they take will reduce greenhouse uh, gas emissions. So that's one thing we've been doing. And then we've also been working together to collect a lot of data to extend the emissions scenarios of Mongolia from 2030 to 2050. Uh, one of the goals of the Paris Agreement is to work towards net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. And so currently Mongolia's uh, climate change commitment is based on scenarios to 2030, mm -hmm. but we're trying to create that sort of knowledge and information base to extend that out to 2050, and then hopefully use that uh, to integrate longer term planning and line up with the vision, uh, the the 2050, Vision 2050 uh, for, for Mongolia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that the greenhouse gas emissions in Mongolia is uh, like higher than average? Like if you just, uh, uh, if you calculate it among like per capita? Yeah, on, a, on the whole, Mongolia's emissions aren't that high, but when you take it on a per capita basis, it's much higher than the global average. So this is uh, due to many reasons, because of the source of energy, relying on coal. Uh, coal has a higher greenhouse concentration of greenhouse gases than other energy sources. But then also you have a long winter here and just uh, long, the cold winter. <laughs> long cold winter. Uh, and so the demand for heating is quite high and, and so you consume more heat and it's not as efficient as it could be as well. So that's one of the, the main reasons for the high higher than average per capita emissions in Mongolia. But Mongolia also has a lot of renewable energy resources too, some of the most, uh, the highest in the world, actually the most per capita in the world. So this is also a great opportunity for Mongolia to uh, transition as well in the future towards relying on more and more renewable energy. Mm -hmm. uh, which one does we have got the higher opportunity? Is it the solar energy or the wind? Yeah, wind and solar are both quite high and there's lots of potential. And I think there's discussions and ambitions for Mongolia to export renewable energy to some of the neighbor, neighboring countries mm -hmm. as well. So uh, currently Mongolia exports a lot of coal also to uh, its neighboring countries. And so in the future, I think there'll be increasing demand for renewable energy. And so being prepared to meet that demand and the shift globally as well is really important for Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So uh, last month we had this climate week. The climate is uh, changing, so should we uh, event, which was organized by the Ministry of Environment and Tourism uh, from May 17th to May 21st. So this event was also uh, supported by GGGI in Mongolia. So could you tell us what uh, was discussed during the event and what was the, uh, and what results has it produced? Yeah, there were different themes uh, throughout the week. Um, and uh, for people like me, it was really a chance to uh, dive in and have deeper discussions about some of the climate change goals that the country has, what's working, what's not working, what are the lessons learned, and what can we do to move forward. Um, so for people that are work on this on a daily basis, we spent, uh, there was a, a series of events to kind of dive deep into some of the topics on our minds regarding climate change. But really the main purpose of the event was to raise awareness amongst uh, everyday people. Um, because addressing climate change is all of our responsibility. And so the idea behind Climate Week was to raise awareness about the causes of climate change, the impacts, 
and to motivate people to take action in their daily lives. Um, I think with the pandemic uh, situation, it was only a virtual event, but I know the plan is to uh, have a similar event in, in every year. Uh, and so hopefully in the future, there'll be more and more opportunities to people engage, to engage, and we can really motivate people um, to take action in their daily lives to address climate change. I think that's the fundamental goal. Mm -hmm. To raise awareness about the climate action. Mm -hmm. So one of the global programs that GGGI carries out is Greenpreneurs, mm -hmm. and which is a free 12-week uh, uh, virtual incubator for young entrepreneurs to develop solutions uh, that address sustainability and climate change issues. So for this year's Greenpreneurs program, uh, 15 teams were selected among 200 uh, teams that applied, and three of them were from Mongolia. Can you tell us about this Greenpreneurs program and the teams that are participating from Mongolia this year? Yeah, I think it's really, we were really excited to see that mm -hmm. three teams from Mongolia made it into the 15. Um, last year, actually, one of the winners was from Mongolia, a team called Nomadic Power Box. So it's really exciting now this year that there's uh, three teams mm -hmm. represented amongst the 15. Uh, Greenpreneurs basically focus, uh, focuses on providing, it's like a 12-week boot camp for young entrepreneurs that have an idea that they want to turn into a business. So in addition to sort of the fundamental uh, fundamental things you need to know when starting up a new business, finance, legal issues, all of those kinds of things. The Greenpreneurs program also provides training on how to define your social and environmental impact um, and to communicate that to prevent potential investors and stakeholders in your business. Um, and so then at the end of 12 weeks, there's a business plan competition. So the teams will present their business plans that they've worked on and fine-tuned over the 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the winners will be awarded uh, a small Funding. cash mm -hmm. award uh, to invest in their business idea. So this year from Mongolia, there's three really exciting ideas, mm -hmm. I think, uh, that touch on different aspects of green growth, climate action, and sustainable de development. The first is um, Agrali is the name of, of the team. And they are working to support farmers to take uh, climate action, to reduce the impact of climate change, to access financing, to invest in their business, and um, to access markets. So that's one of uh, the ideas. The second idea is around, um, it's like a fully uh, recyclable toilet. It's transportable, um, you can, it recycles the water itself. Um, sanitation, I think, is one of the big challenges here in yeah, Mongolia. In, Mongolia. Yeah. in the rural provinces. Yeah, especially in the rural provinces, but also I think in here the in, yeah, in the Gera districts as well. And so this team uh, proposes a new toilet mm -hmm. um, that can help meet the different, I mean, people pick up and move a lot here, so you can't have a fixed toilet mm -hmm. always. So I think their idea toilet. is to yeah. have a transportable toilet and it uses, it reuses the water for the flush as well so it has a minimal impact uh, demand for water mm -hmm. I think which is also quite exciting and then the third idea is around air pollution I think living here you know that air pollution can sometimes be quite bad and so one of the teams has proposed um, an indoor air filter and it uses locally uh, made materials like wool um, so I think this is also quite an exciting idea to meet a, kind of a real need here in Mongolia. So I'm really looking forward to hearing their pitches at the end of the 12 mm -hmm. weeks. But more importantly, hopefully they'll be able to get their businesses off the ground and will be able to buy their products or use their services in the near future. Mm -hmm. So our time is coming to an end. And what final message do you have for our audience? Yeah, I think when you think about environment and climate change, you hear a lot about the doom and gloom, but there's also lots of important opportunities. And for me, it's quite exciting to think about all the innovations and opportunities there are, uh, and we can work together to create a greener future. Whether you're a young entrepreneur, someone working in government, or a, a regular citizen, in our day-to-day -day lives, there's lots of things we can do to work together to build a green economy. So I think uh, rather than being kind of depressed about uh, the impact of climate change, I think it's really important that we're excited and motivated about the opportunities to work together to build the kind of future that we want um, to protect the environment and improve our lives and, and well-being.
Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, uh, Annika Pearson, for coming. Thanks for having me here today to talk about GGGI's work, but more importantly, the opportunities here in Mongolia to uh, promote green growth. You've watched Sightline. Our guest today was Ms. Annika Peterson, Country Representative of Global Green Growth Institute in Mongolia. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.